Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Annie for those of you who are new here. And if you're new here, consider subscribing down below because I want to see you come back for more videos, okay? Okay, so today's video is gonna be about why I decided medical school was for me. So about two videos ago in my psychiatry rotation video, which I will link up here if you haven't seen it, Lavender Lilies commented that I should talk about why I decided medical school was for me. If you guys have any suggestions or videos you want me to do, go ahead and put them down below in the comments. Let's get into the video, guys. Okay, so why did I decide to go to medical school? Let's start from the beginning, guys. Um, I'm a Christian and I believe that God has this beautiful, amazing plan for your entire life. That he knows already what the end is going to be. And so like along the way, you know, he puts like little clues and little things to guide you in the right direction. Um, and I feel like that's what happened with my life. So I remember my first time I ever thought I wanted to become a doctor. I was seven years old, seven or eight, actually. Um, my little sister, the one in my sister's tag video, if you guys haven't watched that, I will link it up here or right here. So my little sister, Ife, she was sick. At that point in time, we were still living in Nigeria and she had um, malaria. So malaria in Nigeria is like, it's kind of like the flu here in North America. So it's not like, it's nothing like, it's not crazy. It's like, oh, you have malaria, you'll be fine. Just rest for a couple of days, you know, take some medication, you'll be all right. But for her, she was three at the time and the malaria wasn't going away. It was like, she was just getting worse and worse and worse. So we took her to my little sister to the clinic and the doctor was like, oh wow, she has malaria and it's one of the worst forms of malaria that you could ever have. Back then I was just like, it's just malaria, why is she? so sick now looking back as a medical student i know it's plasmodium falciparum which is the worst form the most severe form of malaria you could get and she had that so malaria is a hemolytic disease it's it's a parasite that affects your red blood cells and causes it to lice and so a lot of people who get malaria tend to be anemic and she was severely anemic so the doctor suggested that we um go to the hospital to get a blood transfusion and i remember being like oh okay like it was like, I, I didn't understand what was going on, but I kind of did. And so we went to the hospital to get a blood transfusion. And I remember them telling my mother that they couldn't give my sister a blood transfusion because they, they would need blood to replace the blood that they gave her. And so my mom was like, yeah, that's fine. I would give my blood, you know, to replace it. And they said to her that they didn't want a woman's blood. Now, like two things there. Number one, the doctors that spoke to my mother were absolutely non-compassionate rude <laughs> and just not what a doctor should be at all and i remember thinking to myself at that point in time that people who are sick have to come and sit through this and listen to some random doctor not be compassionate to them to their own situation and i remember being very angry at, about that and like telling myself oh my gosh when i become a doctor i'm going to be a better doctor than these ones and number two what the heck why can't a woman <laughs> donate blood like it's just blood you know anyways so um at that point in time my sister she was seizing a little bit like she was having seizures so they refused to touch her until you know the whole blood thing was sorted out that's not what medicine is guys medicine is about compassion benevolence um maleficence i can't remember the other two but that's like we want to help that's what a medical doctor should do but those doctors were definitely not like that um i remember she was on her hospital bed and this random I think she was either a nurse or a doctor just came in and was like okay don't tell anybody that I did this and she gave my sister an injection she gave her a shot and then she stopped season and man thank god for that woman um funny enough my mom went back to the hospital after my sister recovered to find out who this woman was and apparently she, she tried to describe this woman to the doctors and the nurses that worked there but apparently no one that looks like that has ever worked there before so i personally believe believe it was an angel but i don't know so that was my first experience with being like okay i want to become a doctor just so i can become a better doctor than these doctors that dealt with my mother um because imagine like having your loved one sick you're already anxious there's so many emotions going through your mind at that point in time as a mother or even as a family member or as a loved one and then to be talking to doctors who just seem to be like okay 
that sounds like a personal problem so at eight years old i kind of knew what i wanted to become and i remember telling my best friend at that time the story and then she was like yeah you know doctors who deal with children are called pediatricians so both of us at that time were like okay we want to become pediatricians and it was like the one the thing we both said every time an adult would ask us what do you want to become we'd be like pediatricians because we felt grown for knowing big words <laughs> but yeah even after um elementary school secondary school in nigeria high school here i found myself drawn to the sciences human biology was my favorite subject i loved human biology i excelled at it um i found myself drawn to helping people i remember when we moved to canada um during my high school days i volunteered with the canadian research um canadian cancer research society the scoliosis research society a friend of mine and i actually organized a fundraiser for the scoliosis research society it was called the 5k run ottawa um and we raised money for that cause um i just found myself drawn to helping people and you know the sciences so it made sense for me you know okay like i love sciences i love helping people i love biology human biology so you know i was on the right path and um i was fortunate enough to um join and be able to be in the international baccalaureate program which is kind of like the advanced placement program in the u.s but the international baccalaureate program is international i spoke to my family doctor here in canada about my aspirations to become a doctor and she was so supportive about it um she allowed me to shadow her a couple of times and some other doctor friends of my family allowed me to shadow them so i kind of understood what the profession is about so and i still wanted to do it so i was like okay i'll keep on going for it so normally in canada you have to do a first degree or a bachelor's before you go to medical school so that was my plan i was going to do a first degree i was going to do a bachelor in something maybe health sciences or something science related and then go on to medical school but apparently god had other plans okay <laughs> so when it came time for me to choose universities to go to um, i applied to a lot of universities in canada and i remember my mother randomly one day was on facebook scrolling and saw an ad for St. George's University, which is the university I'm at right now. Um, and she was like, oh, I knew, come and look at this. They have a pre-medical program that, you know, allows you to do your pre-med and then just graduate into medical school. And it was supposed to be seven years long. So I was kind of reluct reluctant because that's not the way I thought it would go. Um, so during one of our parents teacher interview conferences my mother spoke to my chemistry teacher at the time shout out to miss paul and miss paul encouraged us she was like yes apply for it go for it um do it you know because you i already was set on what i wanted to become anyway so it wasn't like it was gonna change or anything so she encouraged us so i applied for it i kind of applied late i applied i think around may april so normally in Canada, for Canadian students, you have to accept your university admission by June 1st. So I applied in April, emailing them back and forth. Nothing was really coming. And so June 1st came and I accepted my admission to UBC. I we paid deposits. I chose my dorm room. We paid the deposit for the dorm room. I remember my mother had already even like paid for flights for every member of my family, everyone to go to Vancouver with me so we could spend at least the first two weeks together, you know, as a vacation. And then I would, they'll leave me there and go back home. I had already picked out my courses and everything. So um, I was set on going to UBC. I was like, okay, St. George's didn't work out. That's fine. I know there's a bigger plan. I know that God has me. And so I remember July, I can't remember the exact date. I actually pulled out the email yesterday and then I forgot the date. I'm sorry, you guys. <laughs> Um, in July, so this was like four weeks before St. George's University was supposed to start. I remember St. George's University was supposed to start on August 12th. So four weeks before, I got an email telling me that I was accepted into the pre-medical science program year two. So I got to skip a year because of my international baccalaureate program. I was excited. I remember being so happy. Um, and you know, unfortunately, we had paid for all these things, but my parents very we're very supportive of my aspirations so like it was no problem we were able to get our deposits back and refunds i don't know about the plane tickets though i never asked my mother what happened to those um 
so anyway so began my journey at st george's university i did my pre-med program um and my basic sciences and now i'm in my clinical rotations definitely glad that this was the path that i chose and i am I have absolutely no regrets about the path that I've chosen to where I am today. And I'm sure in the future, I would not regret it. Um, my journey to medicine is not traditional in the way that I did not do a first degree. I didn't do a bachelor's degree and, you know, apply for medical school and all that. But I think it's unique in that way. And it adds to my spice. <laughs> my own path was kind of you know clear from the beginning for some people it's not that clear i think it's important for you to sit down and have a frank conversation with yourself if you want to do medicine then do volunteer work that exposes you to what um medicine will be about so you know if it's something that you want to do with your life you know talk to people about the hours how their lifestyle is um, I did a lot of that. I spoke to a lot of doctors just so I knew exactly what it is I was getting into. And then look at your academics, like what are you drawn to? If you like physics and math, um, maybe medicine might not be it for you. If you like biology, if you like chemistry, if those are the subjects that draw you and you excel at them, then maybe medicine might be it for you. Um, just look at the whole picture because Yes, medicine is about lifelong learning and that is exciting and one of the reasons that, you know, I wanted to do medicine. And it's such a noble profession, but it's not for everybody. So make sure you know what it is you're getting into. Make sure your parents are not the ones um, pushing you into it because I know I'm Nigerian, I'm African. So I know African parents can do that a little bit sometimes. But you have to remember that at the end of the day, it's your happiness, it's your... It's not your parents that are going to be that profession for you. It's going to be you at the end of the day, you know, waking up every morning, going to that hospital at 5 a.m. Is that something you want to do with your life? You have to be um, honest with yourself. And I think that's like, in a nutshell, <laughs> what I would say to anybody who is thinking medicine might be the path for me. I wanted to do a video titled, Should You Go to Medical School? If you guys want to see that, let me know down below in the comments if that's something you're interested in seeing. Going to Grenada itself, like getting to Grenada, because we got the admission acceptance so late and it was during carnival period, which is a huge deal in Grenada. So we weren't able to get flights closer to August 12th. The earliest flight we were able to get was August 3rd or August 2nd. And I remember we had to fly out super early and it was a whole struggle. I think that whole story deserves a video of its own. Thank you guys for listening to me talk about um, how I decided medicine was for me. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. Please don't forget to like this video and subscribe down below if you want to see more of my content. You can feel free to watch any other video on this channel. The world is yours to discover. And please share if you think this will be helpful for somebody. I will see you in my next video. Bye.